Hello and welcome to The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry, discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and the glue that holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's get off another episode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are on the verge of E3 2018. The event is now just over a week away, and as a result, I'm kicking off in the Insider format a series of episodes dedicated to each of the significant press conferences. So we're not talking about the PC gaming show. We're not talking about Devolver. We're going to look at each of the big AAA third parties or console manufacturers press conferences. And we're going to discuss everything that they're going to be talking about, going to be doing and making a few predictions along the way. First off, and in this episode, we're going to kick things off by talking about EA. So first, let's kick things off by talking about the sure things that we can expect from EA at their EA Play Showcase this E3 2018. And let's kick things off by talking about Battlefield 5. It was showcased extremely recently, about a week and a half ago, and we saw a lot of the game, we learned a lot about the game, courtesy of one single trailer. It was a tone piece, but we're going back to World War II, there's a lot going on there, um, and let's be honest, EA loves showing off the enormous combat, um, we, we see large segments of past conferences dedicated to here's half an hour of multiplayer of Star Wars Battlefront or here's a you know, large portion of time dedicated to this. Their big money maker, which is going to be Battlefield 5 this year, is going to see quite a lot shown for it. So look out for a lot of Battlefield 5 when that gets shown at E3 2018. Another thing to look out for, and it's a staple of every EA conference, is their EA Sports content. We're going to see NBA, we're going to see FIFA, we're going to see Madden, we might see NHL, and maybe some other smaller fry sort of sporting titles, but this segment is always probably the one that drags the most, it's the one that kind of gets a lot of people complaining, but it has to happen. EA has to appease their shareholders, their stakeholders, and the, the sporting franchises make them more money than anything else, so they're going to need to lean into this. We're going to be seeing a lot of FIFA because of the Ultimate Team. We're going to see those same sort of features. We might see Longshot again from uh, Madden, which was an interesting inclusion for last year's Madden entry. They've got some interesting things they're doing there, but that's one of, going to be one of the main focuses, whether you like it or not. And finally, there's Anthem. Anthem was debuted last year at the EA and Microsoft conferences, and expect this year with a little bit of the dust to have, uh, that's now settled around the whole Mass Effect Andromeda Bioware fiasco. Um, you know, it's all gone now, so let's expect to see a lot of Anthem. This is going to be the game's big opportunity to win hearts, minds, imaginations. It's going to be going up against The Division 2 in that early 2019 window, supposedly. So this is its chance to kind of show us what it is in a really significant way, show us how it differs from The Division, how it differs from Destiny and others in that shared world shooter sort of mold. Who knows exactly? Bioware's got a lot in store. Bioware's teasing it already. We may even see more in the days leading up to the event, but still expect a big showcase from Bioware and Anthem at E3 2018. So next, Let's talk about the 50-50 games, the ones that are a bit of a coin toss, the ones that may or may not show maybe games that we know about but we're not necessarily expecting to see anything of, or something that could you know, be a real curveball that comes out of the box. I want to first start by talking about Respawn Star Wars game. There's a lot of pressure on this title after what happened to Amy Hennig slash Visceral Games' Star Wars title. It got killed. In some ways, we'll talk about that properly shortly. Um, and it means that this is the marquee Star Wars game for the coming future. Stig Edsmussen and Respawn have been hard at work on it for a while, and it seems like the time's about right. It's just a matter of, does EA want to throw out another heavily sci-fi game in there when they're trying to promote Anthem? Like, how much kind of cross-pollination there is, how much, like, there's a few things that we, they need to be keeping in mind here. Um, but personally, I'm keen. There's the presence of Star Wars, uh, sorry, there's the presence of Star Wars to be expected in some way, shape or form. There's lightsabers supposedly present in the game. I'm real keen to see that. 
So who knows? Let's hope it's there. Next up, I wanna talk about EA IP revivals. What I'm really hopeful for is that we see something from Skate, that we see something from Dead Space, that we see something from Mirror's Edge, or one of those other EA IP, I'll throw one for you, Matt Hewson, Jade Empire. I wanna see a revival of an older IP, a beloved IP that gets a lot of love, but doesn't get a lot of love from EA. They need to win back hearts, minds, imaginations, and a bit of faith and throwing the gaming community a bone would be really important, it'd be really valuable, and I really hope they do that. He's hoping it is something like Skate, or again, for Matt, Jade Empire. These sort of things win hearts and minds, and I really hope that EA is thinking along these lines, because it'll pay off a buttload. The last thing I wanna talk about in this particular segment is the EA Originals sub-brand that they've established in the last few years. We've seen Yanni in Unravel, we've seen Faye, we've seen A Way Out, and we're due to see what the next game is under this large umbrella. We haven't got anything on the way at the moment. There's Sea of Solitude, but we haven't really heard anything of that. We haven't seen it on an EA stage at all. Maybe that's the game that'll show its face. Maybe it'll be something completely new. Maybe it'll be a sequel to Unravel. There's a few things that could be possible here. Maybe it's something completely new. Let, like, let's get excited about this. EA is exploring new IP. They're supporting independent developers. They're giving them money to do whatever they want to achieve their dream is, uh, dreams. I think that's a really promising concept and I hope that it pays off at EA Play 2018. Our goal has always been not to just sort of make a game that is set in the Star Wars universe, but to really tell an authentic Star Wars story. And that's actually a hugely different thing. How do you ground the new and unfamiliar in the familiar? You need the guidance of someone like Doug Chang to show you the way. One of the great joys of working with Amy is she is like a, a film director in many ways because she is telling her story and I'm helping to realize her world. And finally, I want to talk about those no chance games, the ones that we just, I think we're kidding ourselves if we expect to see them at E3 2018. The first one I want to talk about is that Visceral Games Amy Hennig Star Wars game. It looks fantastic. It is not completely dead. It's being reworked. It sounds like it's being made into that shared world Destiny sort of uh, game. But it does mean that everything it's gone, with everything it's gone through and this redevelopment, I guess, of sorts, that we shouldn't really expect to see this game. If we do, that'd be fantastic. It'd be a massive surprise, and I think people would be really excited, regardless of the new direction. This was meant to be a very story-heavy game. Amy Hennig is a fantastic writer, and I don't know if she has any capacity or any involvement with this new version of the game. I truly hope she does, because she's incredible at what she does. But it's a great opportunity for EA to do something fantastic with this franchise. I just think that we need to wait one more year before we see what that looks like. And finally, and it's one that really hurts me. I spoke about it in the last segment with the 50-50s. I probably shouldn't have because I think I'm kidding myself. Dead Space. Another game that was developed by Visceral Games. So without Visceral, I think the odds of seeing this get announced in any way, shape or form is incre incredibly low. But I would love to see a Dead Space 4 or a reboot of the franchise or something. EA, enlist another studio if you need to. This is an incredible IP that took a little bit of a turn with Dead Space 3, but really was not fostered, cared for, looked after by EA the way it should. Visceral was not supported in the way they needed to be, and it resulted in extreme costs, ext uh, you know, sales that weren't matching the game's quality, and it's led to the studio's closure. EA, you've got this IP. It is a valuable one. In the right hands, it could be incredible. Please find the right team. Please make it happen but I don't think E3 2018 is gonna be the year that we see that. He's hoping it's next year. Fuck it. Hello, old friend. So those were some of my predictions for EA at EA Play at E3 2018. I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope you, I gave you some things to think about that maybe you weren't considering before. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. All those buttons are down below here. And by doing so, that gives you access to weekly episodes of Patched, the video games club. 
more episodes of The Insider, Player 2 Plays, The Late Game Review, and much, much more. There's some awesome content on this channel, so please make sure to go and check it out. For written content, make sure to visit the website, player2.net.au, where you'll find reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, the Player 2 Writer's Draft, and heaps more, all contributed by some of the best writing talent in Australia, so please make sure to go and check it out. We're on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au. Consider kicking in a few dollars. At the lower tiers, you get early access to episodes such as this, and at the higher tiers, you can get exclusive episodes of Patched or The Insider. You can get at the top tier, the opportunity to join us in the monthly Player 2 podcast. There's some awesome incentives there. Consider throwing in a few dollars, joining us, helping build that Player 2 dream. We'd love your support. For rolling updates, you can find me at PaulJamesP2 on Twitter. The website, you can find at Player2AU on Twitter. And until next time, that, are the, that is the EA predictions for E3 2018. You can catch the conference at 4 a.m. Australian Eastern Time on the 10th of June 2018. I hope some of these predictions come true. I hope everything you're looking forward to at, e uh, at EA at E3 2018 comes true. And until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.